Number three on the list, exposure bulbs. One only, that's the answer. Professional units only have one bulb. If a salesman tries to sell you an exposure unit with more than one bulb, he doesn't understand this business. Just like if he tries to sell you spray or liquid adhesive or those stretch and glue screens, turn around, go the other direction. This guy doesn't understand how to produce quality and protect your health and make money. He's in it for himself. He's interested in getting you into a product where you come back for more and more and more. And we really don't want that. Now, exposure units, watch my video about it. We even offer you a drawing how to make your own. Budget, 75 bucks. Depending on where you shop for the light, that's what it's gonna cost you. Instead of spending thousands of dollars. Now, if you have lots of money, and you wanna buy a professional unit, they're beautiful. But make sure, one bulb only. And watch our video, that will give you the answers on that subject. The problem with multiple bulbs in your exposure unit is the light is coming at the image at an angle and it exposes the emulsion underneath your image. And so the size of the image that you print becomes smaller than the positive or the image that you exposed into the screen. And if that image that you're trying to print is really small, like details, the dot over an eye or a half tone, they may not print at all. And if you are printing half tones and you're trying to get a shaded color, the color is going to be skewed because you're not putting down as much ink as intended by the art. So the simple thing is don't do it. Have a point light source. All the good units use them. And in order to be able to expose typical sizes, a 12 by 12 image, 12 by 14, something like that, you need to have that image typically 21 inches away from the glass. The actual formula is measure the diagonal of your largest image multiplied by 1.5 and that gives you the number of inches from the glass to your light source. Okay. The problem is you, as you move the light further away, the light is being spread over a greater area and it's losing its intensity. So you need more wattage in the light. That means typically 1,000 watts or more. More is better. And where are you going to get 1,000 watts? Well, now you're looking at 220 volt and an outdoor light for lighting up the parking lot. That's all it is. And the 220 volt is available in every home in America. If you have a washer and dryer, your dryer is plugged into the wall at 220. So put a dryer plug on your unit and you're good to go. Or run a separate line that's 220. It's very difficult to find 110 volt at 1,000 watts. I wouldn't even ask you to look because it would be very frustrating. But these outdoor lights are very commonly available. And if you shop, you can pay different prices depending on where you shop. But don't be spending more than 75 bucks. If you're lucky, you'll get it cheaper. If you know an electrical contractor, you might get it for free off of some job. But in any event, the point is you want a single source of the light. You want that bulb as small as possible. So it's like shining a flashlight at a vase on the living room table. You want to cast a shadow on the wall that's the same size as the vase. You don't want the light coming at the vase from an angle and washing out the image from behind the vase. And that's what's happening with these multiple unit bulbs. Anybody sells you one of those things doesn't know what they're doing. They're doing you a great disservice. Don't buy one. It's a mistake. And you're cutting yourself off from half tones, detail, all the high-end work. So don't be a slave to that. In any event, let's go to the next one. The next one is no temperature control on flash dryers and conveyor dryers. It's such a common practice by the manufacturers of equipment. And again, these guys don't print, just like those dealers who are selling you the spray adhesive and selling you the stretch and glue frames and those multiple bulb exposures. They don't print, they don't get it. And yet, it's causing you major uh, damage. So, let me sh show you what I mean by temperature control. This is temperature control. It's in this box. This one happens to be solid state. And it has an on-off switch to break the circuit so when it's off, it's completely off. 
and this is a rheostat, you can adjust the temperature. If you don't have the on and off switch, you might turn the rheostat down and it doesn't really break the current and you're still getting an electric bill, the box isn't really getting as cold as it should be. So this is really a, a safety measure. But there are temperature controls which are a rheostat. The one that's typically sold in the industry is made in Mexico. It's cheap junk. And what happens is they fail. And, and they also, not always, but easily 5% of the time, that's unsuccessful as far as we're concerned. And the other thing about them is they are uh, rated for 15 amps and uh, turning these on and off what happens is the connections can go on them so whereas on a solid state don't have any of those problems these are zero maintenance issues but that's really whether you get the Mexican switch or you get the solid state that really isn't the major issue the major issue is whether or not you have any control or not and so many flash dryers and conveyors are sold without control it's a tragic mistake. It's like if you have an oven in your kitchen, do you have just an on-off switch? That's what these manufacturers are selling in flash and conveyor dryers. Just comes on one way, full blast hot. But in your kitchen, you have to cook a turkey. And the turkey has to be in the oven, what, three hours? So you don't want real high heat or you'll burn the outside of the turkey before you cook the inside. Other times when cooking, you do need high heat. You need to have control depending on the cooking conditions. And the same thing with screen printing. Inks can be different thicknesses, different amount of pigment. You can have a heavy sweatshirt. Maybe it's got some moisture in it. it could be a cotton shirt. It could be a 50-50. It could be a 100% polyester and nylon shirt. And the, the curing requirements of each of those are really quite different. You have to have control. So people who don't have control typically have this box six inches above the platen, which means the center of the image gets cured, but the outside areas of the image don't. That's not good. And they're going to burn the shirt before they get the outside areas cured. Versus when you have control, you turn the temperature down. That saves you money on your electric bill. That's kind of important. And you put this box about two inches, inch and a half, something like that, above the shirt because heat wants to rise. So the heat's being projected down and we want that heat evenly spread. So by having it two inches above the shirt, the heat will get evenly spread and the whole image will get cured. We have much better control, particularly with flash drying where you only want to just kiss the surface of the ink, just gel over the surface, not fully cure the ink. So we'll be able to put more ink on top and have the two inks ultimately bond. You really can't do the job without temperature control. It's an absolutely essential and yet so many people I run into have flash dryers with no temperature control. You know, why not buy a car without tires? It's the same thing. Or get the kitchen oven without temperature control. Or so many just ludicrous mistakes and yet dealers are selling this and when you find a dealer trying to do this to you, you got the wrong dealer. Go find another dealer. Find somebody who understands what this business is about.